everybody what's up this morning hope you guys are doing good and thanks for tuning in the channel much appreciated and today's uh youtube video what we're gonna do we're not gonna do a bait video today but i want to talk about something that's if you've been following much of uh the tournament news lately something that's really been coming to the forefront a lot lately and it has for years i mean the last man it seems like the last 10 years has been a big factor and that's um uh the the whole discussion and topic of man-made brush piles and lakes so um i sort of want to give you my opinion on it you know to have a little discussion about it because i think it needs to be talked about i haven't heard or seen any videos where they've really talked about it so i'm pretty familiar with the topic so we're gonna go over it in detail here but hey before i get started just a couple housekeeping tips i just wanted to remind you guys that tonight at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, Johnny and I have our weekly uh, live podcast on the new Fish the Moment Live channel. So, not Fish the Moment channel, but the Fish the Moment Live channel. So, go on Fish the Moment Live tonight. We'd love to have you at 7. And Johnny and I, right now, we have the largest live podcast of any fishing show in the country right now, as far as people tuning in. So, um, we're going to do, you know, have some talks tonight on the whole live scope deal and how it's uh, been playing a factor in the tournament wins lately should be a good time. Also, February 18th, Johnny and I have our next virtual seminar. Um, we're going to be doing this one on spring jig fishing. Uh, you can sign up for that at, at fishthemoment.com. Uh, much appreciated there. So anyway, let's get into this <coughs> whole brush pile deal. You know, that tournament I fished up at Lake the Ozarks last week, guys, that was... Uh, it, that was it didn't surprise me because a lot of the guys that did get up there caught them over uh caught them over the top of brush piles with alabama rigs you know just uh that was just the dominating factor and if if you paid much attention like i think that red crest that mlf red crest um dustin connell won that tournament fishing a jerk bait over the top of, of deep brush piles and it's just a factor any time of the year all anymore i mean if you look back at a lot of the tournaments that they have anymore, with the exception of when the bass are locked down during the spawn, when they're actually spawning, man-made brush piles in our lakes around the country are becoming a dominant force in winning tournaments. You know, it's just unbelievable, especially with the, the advent of all the, you know, down imaging, side imaging, forward-facing technology sonar, that type of stuff. But... So I sort of want to go over this a little bit, sort of give you my thoughts on it. You know, man-made brush is nothing new in the lakes we're around here. I mean, I've planted it myself for years. I mean, back when I was fishing Grand Lake a bunch, when I lived uh, closer to the lake down there, and my mom and dad had a trailer on the house, I spent a lot of time putting man-made brush in Grand Lake, so I'm real familiar with it. But back then, um, there wasn't a lot of guys doing it. This was back, I'm talking about in the late 80s, uh, early 90s, that type of stuff. There just wasn't that many people doing it. And on top of that, um, this was before GPS. It was before any side imaging. All we had were flashers. So when we put brush out back then, you had to use completely the triangulation method, which most people don't even probably know how to do anymore. It's a sort of a lost art. But you had to triangulate these areas to find these offshore brush piles. Therefore, it made the whole process of fishing, you know, deep brush a lot more difficult than it is, you know, today. Um, now, you know, with all the technology and the sonar and the GPS, I mean, people can plant a brush pile. You know, they can drop a waypoint on it, and they can they can find their way right back to it and make pinpoint cast to the the, uh, the those spots. So it's a lot more efficient. And, you know, there's a lot of guys across the country right now, they've taken it to the extreme where they've actually bought pontoon boats, stripped the pontoon boats down, and they use it nothing. The only thing they do with it is plant brush all year long, make their own man-made brush piles. So all over the country now, especially here, like, well, not just in my part of the country, but here in, here in my part of the country, Grand Lake, Stockton Lake, Lake of the Ozarks, Table Rock, there is so much man-made brush put out there right now that um, it, it's just becoming a dominating factor in winning or doing good in tournaments anymore. I would venture to say in this part of the country around here, and I'm sure it's the same in different parts of the country, there's no doubt because I've seen it the same, but if you're not fishing man-made brush, probably I'm going to guess 
at least 12 months out of the year, you're probably not going to win very many tournaments because, you know, anytime those fish get, you know, after the spawn, when they get into their post-spawn mode, into the summer months like that, man-made brush is a key factor for winning tournaments. Now, you can go out and catch a lot of fish doing different stuff, <clears throat> you know, just fishing the bank and that type of stuff, but you can't win. I'll use Grand Lake as an example. You know, you can go to Grand Lake in June or July and that type of stuff, August, and um, you can go down there and you can just fish the bank and you can fish docks and stuff like that and you can catch a 10 or 12 pound lemon. But the guys that are fishing deep brush that time of year are the guys that are gonna catch the 17 to 20 pounds. You simply cannot compete fishing shallow on a lake that's got a lot of man-made brush piles on it. You can't do it. Some guys even go to the extent of like, they bait the holes. They, they drop crawdads and dog food and stuff down on the brush piles that draws in bait fish and crawdads. So it's becoming a, a big deal like that. So the question I'm posing is like, is the whole topic or the whole deal about man-made brush piles getting certain anglers an unlevel playing field? And I, you know, I'm here to tell you right off the bat, at times it does. I mean, if you're, if you're, you know, some type of a local angler and you have the ability and you're close to a lake and you have the time and ability to put in a lot of brush, it's definitely going to give you a huge advantage because what a lot of guys do, you know, that have the access to those lakes is they go down there and they put different brush piles in different water depths based upon the level of the lake. So, you know, somebody that's really, really focused on planting brush, they may have, they, they may have hundreds of piles at different levels of different depths of the lake that is good at different times of the year under different water clarities, um, under different water levels, you know, so they can stay constantly on good piles. Their piles aren't too sh deep or they're not too shallow. They're spread apart just right. They're put on key structures. So, so somebody is going to come back, you know, when I say that, it's like, okay, we're well, well, you know, you can go find those brush piles too. Sure you can. You know, you can go out there right now and you, you can spend your time idling and side imaging and finding a lot of brush yourself. I mean, that's what a lot of guys do anymore. They, they don't practice normally. It's, there is an, there's a segment of anglers out there that basically spend most of their time practicing graphing, side imaging, down imaging for brush. That's all they do. They look for brush, they look for fish within that brush, and uh, that's just how they practice. I mean, they, they don't do anything else than that. I've seen it over and over and over again. So, um, you know, the that and so the question remains to be seen, you know, how big of an impact does this man-made brush have in a lake, and what has it done to our fishing? It's completely changed fishing. What it's done, there's so much brush in our lakes anymore across the country on these man-made lakes that it's basically it's causing fish, you know, to change their habitats, you know, as far as where they live. And I'll use Grand Lake for a prime example. You know, Grand is like a lot of different lakes. You know, back 30 years ago, you know, <clears throat> most of the fish at Grand, they used docks and shallow rocks and shallow wood cover. And now they, that's just not the case. You know, you can still catch fish doing that, but all those better fish are going to be living in that offshore brush. So <clears throat> I look at it from a tournament angler, there's a couple different ways. First of all, um, is the brush a good thing in a lake? Absolutely, it's a good thing. It creates habitat for the fish. It creates cover. Um, it gives them more ambush points. So from that standpoint, uh, you know, having more cover in a lake, having more habitat is always good. It, it's, it allows you to have a more sustainable, bigger population of fish. But from a tournament perspective, and that's sort of what the point of this video is, it definitely gives certain anglers an advantage. I mean, if anglers that have the ability to plant those brush piles um, on the lakes that they go to, know where all those brush piles are, um, it, it definitely gives them advantage where they can run that type of stuff certain times of the year and dominate the tournaments. You know, absolutely dominate them. And a lot of these lakes that are known for brush pile fish, they're key brush pile lakes, you know, you'll see a handful of anglers that completely dominate at certain times of the year. I mean, simply because they understand brush, they've got it planted, they know how to fish it. Um, they're just, they've turned it into an art form about fishing brush. And, and like I said, so you got two schools of camp there. You have those people 
the local type people that plant the brush and then you have that segment of anglers that go out there that do nothing but spend their practice time looking for brush so from my standpoint um you know looking at it is like from a tournament standpoint is i don't really i don't like the whole fact myself because i know if i'm fishing a tournament on a certain lake that if i don't spend my time graphing and finding offshore brush piles i'm taking myself out of the out of the loop to win the tournament there's no way i'm going to win the tournament i'll go back to like grand lake in june in july again if we're fishing a big tournament in grand lake in july um and i just say i say i, I want to i'm going to spend my practice flipping docks or i'm going to crank lay downs or i'm going to go up the river and you know crank rocky banks and lay downs I've just taken myself out of the chance to win a tournament. I'm not going to win the tournament doing that. Everybody that's going to win the tournament, they're going to be down on that lower end of the lake. They're going to be graphing and they're going to be fishing that deep brush. That's just the way it is. And um, that's just not the way that I like to fish. A lot of guys do. I mean, that's a lot of guys just love that, that way of fishing, but it's really sort of changed the face of the way that we fish a lot of our man-made lakes. And, you know, this is something that, you know, it's taken place all over the country. I mean, it's, it's literally transforming the way that, you know, we fish and how tournaments are won. And that's why you see anglers like uh, Jacob Wheeler and Brian Thrift, um, guys like that that are just experts at, you know, finding that offshore brush. And that's what they spend their time and they look for. You know, they dominate in those situations. And that's why you have you know every lake across the country and you guys probably know if you guys fish you know your favorite lake all the time if, if there's a group of anglers usually there's probably a half a dozen anglers that dominate local tournaments particularly in the either the, the pre-spawn or the warm you know post-spawn summer months those anglers are the ones that spend their time planting brush i mean that's just the way they do it Another example I'll give you guys up at Stockton Lake in Missouri where I fish a lot. You know, they have a lot of like jackpot tournaments in the summer there. It will always take a big sack of fish to win that tournament. You know, over 20 pounds in the summertime. And then fourth place may be nine pounds or, or seven pounds. It drops way off because these guys out there that spend their time planting that brush are the ones that win tournaments. So just a an overview of the whole thing about this brush deal it's like um i guess what i want to reiterate is that it's changed fishing it's changed the way we approach fishing because you simply cannot win certain bass tournaments unless you're fishing man-made brush you simply can't do it it's just too big of a factor anymore and it will continue to do so um as long you know as, as that continues on so i'm not saying that you know it should be it's it needs to be stopped or made or illegal this is sort of more of a commentary on you know how the sports evolved and how our lakes have evolved and how the fish have changed on it simply because of people putting in so much man-made brush in there but another thing that's sort of weird to me it's like okay you got all this man-made brush that people put in the lake but why is it there's so many tournament rules if i want to plant brush during the official practice it's illegal for me to do that what, what's the deal with that why why if i if i want to cut down you know, a, a dead limb off of a tree and plant it in the water to try to create my cover, why is that illegal for me to do that? Or somebody else that maybe lives on that lake that has 500 brush piles in the lake they put out earlier. So there's a little bit of hypocrisy that goes on there that I'd like to see changed with that. I wish we could, if we were in, you know, if we stayed within the state and federal laws, I wish we could, uh, you know, plant brush throughout the course of practice anyway. So anyway, uh, just today's topic there, uh, shoot me some comments. What, what do you think? I'd like to know your all's experience with man-made brush in the lake that you guys fish with. You know, what, how big of a factor is it where you fish? Um, I I'm just told you what it is around here in Missouri. So shoot me some comments. Let me know how it, how it affects you guys. But anyway, that's just today's commentary, a little bit of the sort of just a, uh, open-ended discussion there. And, um, hope you guys are doing well. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, please subscribe if you haven't to the channel, guys. Like I said, I looked at those analytics last night, and over 60% of the people that watch the videos I put out are not subscribed to the channel. So, man, just do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, man. I'd really appreciate it. It helps out a lot, and I'll keep putting out these videos for you guys to watch if you can do that for me. So, anyway, I hope, hope you guys have a good day. We'll talk to you later.